Getting ready to install a few of these, so I thought I'd do a quick review of the NanoBeam AC Gen 2. Now, I've used the NanoBeams for some of the projects, including uh, one of the projects we refer to as the Bridge Bridge project, where there's a bridge and we're using a wireless bridge using the NanoBeams to beam it across. Uh, we did that a while back. It's been working wonderful. They haven't had any problems. I think it's almost two years ago that I did that. Uh, these are the Gen 2 NanoBeams, which are faster, better, next generation. Uh, a couple of features. They have a built-in management radio, which is kind of cool. Uh, so you have the main broadcast radio and a management radio, uh, and these have an ability to be managed via an app, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you can do that. I'm not going to cover the app today. That's going to be for another day. Uh, but there's videos you can see that you control from the app. I usually set these up manually. So we're going to talk about the setup of this, what comes in a box, and do a speed test, of course, because you want to know just how fast it will go. What's really impressive is these are generally can be found for under $100. And uh, links below to the Amazon store where you can grab some of these. But 450 megabit transfer rate, 15 kilometers, or about 9 miles uh, maximum range for a hundred dollar box. That's amazing. I remember paying a lot more for a lot less not that long ago, uh, or even if you go with some of the other brands. These are amazing uh, in terms of the how fast they are, how good they work, and uh, what you get in them, and how easy they are to set up, especially use the app. So uh, unboxing it, there's not too much in it. Just the essentials. You get your, uh, the device itself, Got a little click ring, which goes on the bottom, and we'll show how that works. You have this little ball mount, the white 24 PoE brick. That I just flung the base off of, but it's got the mounting plate base. So you can just take, mount this, and uh, mount it to the wall, bolt it on there, and snap, and then your brick stays there. It does come with this uh, clamp to help put it on there, and there's holes right here for the clamp to go through, so you can pull mount this if you want. A get started book and a power cord. Uh, that's about it. I already took this apart uh, and uh, pulled the plastic off. It comes with really nice packaging and plastic, but uh, didn't think that was overly relevant to it. But you know, it does come with that, so it does uh, keep pretty in there. Now, what's really cool about the way this ball mount works, and I just love this design. It just sits in there and clicks. Spin, click, and it's set. Now, put your finger on it, get a little to take the tension off, and you can slide this ball mount to any angle you want. So you can just move it around, give it a click, and it'll hold at that angle. This makes pointing and aiming these really easy, and of course it's aided by the fact that there's a level on this. So you know whether or not it's level when you're pointing it at the other device. So from an installation standpoint, you just take and uh, carry this up with you, put that in your uh, pouch or whatever, however you want to get up on a ladder because uh, you don't want to drop these. And you mount this, you get it bolted too. If you want to bolt it straight, there is an option for putting it right through the hole in the middle. You can just get a really long screw and shoot this right to something and away you go. Just don't forget, put this on first before you shoot it there. But yeah, we, we mounted a few of them like to the sides of buildings just by one straight shot through here and done. Uh, and anchor it. So it doesn't come with a you know, long screw. That's something you have to get from the hardware store. But uh, mounting wise, very, very easy to mount. Very easy to remove if you got to remove them. Uh, that being said, when you're mounting them, something to consider, put them high enough so people do not remove them. <laughs> so just a thought there that has happened places. My Wi-Fi is out. Well, someone removed it. Uh, this just snaps off on the bottom so you can get to the uh, Ethernet jack in there. There's just one. There's a reset, a recessed reset in there and uh, pretty straightforward. So obviously it's going to be mounted under there. This is actually going for a job and I already programmed this one and the other one we'll do a speed test for. Uh, they have a pool house uh, separate from their main house and uh, we're bridging this to get Wi-Fi to their pool house and to uh, bridge the cameras over there uh, for their property. All right, so now that you're taking a look at it, let's talk about the fun stuff and actually set up and test it. All right, so I ran through, set up the devices. They're good to go. They're plugged in. They're working. Uh, turns out microphone stands will hold pretty good for this. So I've got one here in frame in the camera, and the other one is just over there behind the camera. So they're optimal. And as you can see from the screen here, they're optimally connected. So 
they're all set up and configured. I'm gonna run over the configuration real quick. It's pretty straightforward. So out of the box, it's UBNT, UBNT, 192.168.1.20. And then I changed one of them to be 25. So this one is the dot 20. And it's broadcasting the SSID of house. I set a password for it and it's in access point to point mode. Out of the box, he's come from a network standpoint in bridge mode. So there's really not a lot of configuring you have to do. You take one, you set it to access point to point mode. You take the other one, settings, station point to point mode, select, or just type in the SSID house, not real creative one, I'll change it later, um, and put the same password in and they'll bridge. Before you do that though, do make sure, as I said, out of the box, they're 192.168.1.20. I changed this one to be 25. If you've made them the same IP, you'll immediately end up with an issue. Just throwing it out there, basic networking. Uh, but they will work on DHCP as well. So if you have something that will assign them addresses, that's something you can do as well. Ideally though, whenever we're putting these in, you wanna set your point to points up to be static IP. It makes it better for troubleshooting. That way if there's any connectivity issues between them, you know exactly which IP each one, it's part of your documentation. Any client that we've done these for, we've always done it that way. Set static IP, log in. If there's ever a problem with either side, we can just, go right into that IP and try and figure out where the problem is from a troubleshooting standpoint. Uh, everything else is pretty much default. The only other thing I did change in here uh, down at the bottom is I have automatic power control. Um, I've turned those on these. I, I've done a little bit of testing with that on off. It doesn't seem to make much of a difference, but uh, even the job that we're doing is relatively close. So why have it over pushing the power on it? Uh, I figure it's smart enough to be optimal. So other than that, these are all the uh, out of the box settings. By the way, in case you're ever wondering, it does support wireless network protection as in a de-authing protection. If you're using two Unify AC units, uh, they both will set up the security protocols between them so no one can de-auth between them. And if you're not familiar with uh, that attack, what that attack does is make them re-register each time. And it's not as much a security problem in terms of them getting in between the signal. It's a big annoyance because it'll make the signal drop. Uh, you can also lock it down if you want to a MAC address. That's one of the options in here. So this one's broadcasting as house. And then you can hit, uh, when you go to select, you can lock it to the MAC address of this device. And what that would allow you to do is keep it so a, no one could just impersonate it. But in order to impersonate, they would also need uh, not only the SSID, but of course the password in order to impersonate this device to get it to connect to it. And that's not that easy to do unless they know your password. Uh, but it is in our layer you can add on there. The downside is if you ever swap one of them, you also have to make sure each device that you've locked to Mac, you update the Mac address on it. Just to get that all out of the way, these are a couple of those little questions that come up. We are running the latest firmware on these as of April uh, 21st, that is uh, 2018. That is gonna be the XV 8.51. Uh, first thing I do whenever I get these devices, I set them up uh, with the latest firmware so I know they're up to date. So they're connected, they're up to date. There's two different IP addresses here. Uh, they are working perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the dashboard back on these. Now the one that's doing the transmitting this is called house because it's also the transmitter you get the air magic on this one because this is the one that's going to set the network up for the other one so this is broadcasting the other one over there is receiving and this is dot 20 that we're on now uh, and this is kind of cool because you can look and reset based on wireless interference if you didn't want it to handle it and you wanted to force it and be able to see the spectrum this is a cool tool to be able to do that so you can look at the air magic and go all right let's test different options on here if we're having any wireless con you know uh, interference that's coming in there so i like the fact that they build that in they also build a lot of other tools in so we're going to go back over here to dashboard for example when you got to aim them so we're going to go over here they have their air view, which we'll get to that in a second, uh, but they have some alignment tools. And what this will do is allow you to point them. So right now they're pretty optimal, but we can put something in front of it. I got some aluminum foil here and you can see that it'll have some changes, very slight. Aluminum foil actually doesn't block the signal quite as much as people think. Uh, so it, it's 
really not that great for wrapping your head either. Uh, and yeah, so you can see that there's a little bit there. It, this is gonna be annoying, but it has a beep noise. Uh, and that way, if you're pointing them in the other directions, uh, it will not beep and then start beeping. So you can actually just have maybe your laptop, even if it's further away, turn the volume up and point them and go, okay, now it's, I can hear that it's aligned. It'll start making a noise for you. So that's definitely pretty cool. Once you have these on here, we've got a discovery app for uh, finding the other devices, which is pretty sweet that they built that in. Uh, you can trace your out, ping, constellation. Constellation is kind of cool too. This is kind of giving you a diagram of how it sees the other thing. And then if we point it down, you'll watch the constellations change. It's just going to start losing it. So we're now not, I got to probably put it even lower which I got it Velcroed on here just in case it falls. But you can see this is changing. This is also just more fine tuning. So you can try to fine tune, making sure it's pointed exactly where it needs to point. It'll figure out the distance, which is what you're seeing right here in the middle. So it says the distance is 0.1 miles. Uh, probably a lot less than that, but it probably just doesn't go uh, lower than that. Uh, but we've tested that and it seems to be roughly accurate for how far away they are, as long as you're using, you know, two unified devices to connect to each other there. Uh, you can do a speed test as well, which is kind of cool. So you can uh, specify the device. So we're on 20, so we're going to specify 25, the remote web port, uh, whether you want to duplex or receive or transmit. You can put in the username and password of the other device, which I had saved in the clipboard. And it will gather data, log into that device, and they'll talk to each other and do a speed test between them, which is pretty neat. So you can see just how much data will push across them uh, based on receive or send. Actually, I probably should have done a transmit test. So we're going to transmit from mine to that one because there's a when you're doing it the other way, uh, my laptop's actually going to cause a problem because my laptop is connected directly through this. There we go. So now it's doing a speed test from this device, transmitting over there. And you can see we're getting even higher than what they specified uh, in there. So they claim 450, but we're seeing in the 500s here. That's pretty awesome. Of course, we're super optimal being the fact that we're just going across my office. Uh, but that's still pretty impressive for speed. Now this is their speed test, and we're going to do our own in a second here. So the last thing we can do is look at the air view. And it'll take a second, but now you can see different noise patterns on there at different areas. So you can figure out maybe what signal you want to do. So if you see a spike in a particular one, you go, that's not where I want to set this. And you can go through and fine tune which channel it's on. Like I said, these are pretty amazing. This is a less than hundred dollar device that comes with a waveform viewer in it. This is an expensive, like the waterfall views and waveform views. These are expensive tools you can buy third party to do site surveys with, or you can buy a device that's not only you know, useful because it can actually bridge these. It It's amazing that it has all this stuff built into it. So I've always been really impressed with these. This is, you know, I'm, I was excited when it came out with the Gen 2 because I'm like, ooh, more features. They're, they're making them better. And they made the price actually a little bit lower than it used to be a few years ago. So definitely really impressive. And I like on the dashboard, I tell you what the link is. Now, the last thing we'll do is an iPerf here uh, and do just a raw network speed test. And we'll do this to get you another idea of just how much data is pushing across there. And doing iPerf, it looks like we're seeing about, uh, it's bouncing around three or 400 megabits a second. So there's your total there. So you're, you know, averaging about 400. Pretty impressive for the speed. Like I said, this is a sub $100 device that's able to transmit at 400 megs and really consistently. Obviously it peaks out even faster. We, when we're doing just a single, not a, du not a duplex test, uh, you're able to get that full, even more bandwidth out of there. But overall, um, that's really great uh, for the project that we're going to use this on. I mean, they make faster ones, but for the project we're going to use this on, they just want Wi-Fi next to the pool and they would like some cameras to work next to the pool. So that is all it needs. That's a great solution for that. 
And uh, well, I guess these are easy to set up. You just set one up to receive, one up to send, and away you go. Now, they do have the phone app. Uh, Chris did a video from Crosstalk on the phone app. I'm not going to repeat the uh, phone app one, but it's just a way to, another way to set it up. I don't set it up in a phone app uh, for convenience reasons and documentation reasons. I like to set them up because once we deploy these at clients, we document all the settings. We download the config files out of each of these. That way, if there's ever a problem, one, we can easily remote in. We have all the password and everything handy in our documentation. Um, two, if we need to replace one, we'll order it. It'll come to our office and we'll pre-program it before we send it on site. So that's my preference for why I set them up that way. But overall, uh, these, like I said, this I'm excited with these Gen 2s. We've actually done a couple other installs. I did, and, uh, the, by the time they come in, we almost always deploy them really quick, so I don't always have time to even review them. Even right now, I'm here on a Saturday evening. These are going in Sunday morning, so we just got them in. I set them up, and they're going out. We've, uh, do, I got to get more uh, time to review more of them, but... Uh, Overall, they're just a great product. I have nothing but good things to say about them. And, uh, the, you know, I may revisit, maybe I'll take and fly my drone back over by some of the ones we've done and re-show you what they look like after running for a couple of years. And they, no other issues with them. Maybe I can go uh, on site and see the speed test. But yeah, if you look at my project from a while ago, I call the Bridge Bridge Project. We used the uh, previous generation of these. That is still in place and still working great for that client. They have no problems with it. Uh, it has went through all kinds of wind, rain, and Michigan weather, uh, sub, sub zero temperatures. Uh, remember, I was worried if the temperature would have any effect. So far it has none. And uh, of course we're Michigan, so we have snowstorms and it's on the water. So there's just everything and they work great. They don't have any internet problems or anything with them. So uh, the, this is the next generation of them. I'm really excited about them. And uh, so if you're interested in them, like I said, I got Amazon links below to our uh, Amazon store if you wanna uh, pick one up. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback, or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.